Hello everyone, my name is Marisha and today's topic is trying hard to get to God because it takes effort. It takes effort to try. It takes time to try. And it takes patience to see the results come through or come to pass. So with that being said, as a Christian, we need to learn how much effort, no, we need to learn yeah, it takes effort to get results done. Because you can say, by faith, I believe this can happen. I, by faith, I speak this into existence. But if there's no actions following through, then it's nothing. Faith without works is dead. And uh, what comes to mind is Joshua. Because by faith, he spoke like the sun and the moon keep his place so that's where it can happen. So he could just say, moon, sun, and moon stop. And just do like, no was for a purpose and also by the will of God. So this battle can be done. Instead of day and night, we've heard, I know, we're going to fight now. And it was done. But no one else can do such a thing just as Joshua said, what God said. No one after that did that, did that again. So his works then was to bring glory unto God. Showing the world, showing the people I serve the God. We, children of Israel, we serve the God of Israel. We serve the God who created the heavens and the earth. And he gave those who are faithful unto him, those who actually love him and serve him, power over any circumstance. Maybe na maybe nature, through people, war, battle, weather, food, um, things you need to live, it's necessary to live. Where it may be clothing, maybe jewelry, God can give it to us all. And the people saw that once the Lord worked through Moses. And because of Moses' faithfulness, that was the example Joshua was able to see. That's why he was able to be equipped and be able to lead the people of God. So as a Christian, it's just not for you to be saved. Your salvation is not for yourself. It is for other people as well. And yes, God saves us. Yes, God loves us. But... All the blessings and all the growth, the testimonies and the gifts is not for our own self. So people miss that. That's where people lack the fear of God because, you know, the fear of God brings understanding. And people lack the understanding like, hey, these gifts that I have, these talents that I have, me playing the drums, me singing, me dancing, me knowing how to preach, me knowing how to, me having influence over people that I did not bring myself. They just, they're just here. They, they, they benefit from what I'm saying and they like what I'm saying. The people I know, the resources I have, like it's not for myself, but people who are greedy and selfish and lack the fear of God, they will use it for themselves. Moses could have just, you know, I'm going to set the people free. You know what? He could have been like Aaron. Use the gold that God gave you. Use the freedom God gave you just to make your own God. No, because Moses knew his role and had confidence in God. He knew every effort he had to stand before God, speak to him, pray, and speak to him for the days for the night, and then having to go face the people. No, his focus, his heart, his mind was to send the Lord to do what he is told to do. But he lost opportunity when he acted upon his emotions of frustration and he beat the rock as and spoke to it. But he was able to see the promised land, but he couldn't go there. Back to Joshua. Joshua, seeing all of that, see, seeing how God responded to Moses, how God responded to his people, he understood order. He understood the purpose behind everything that he do, that he do, that he did and everything that he's doing like there's a purpose to it i'm not just here for myself i'm here for the people of god and i'm here as a voice of god on planet earth right now and to set judgment because what the lord is sending us here on earth to learn judgment learn of his judgment and learn to learn of him learn his way because remember god even says like hey and so he spoke to the corinthians he's telling them why do you guys go to the the world um, um, paraphrase. Why do you guys go to the government? Go go to the like the people of law, the judges, the those people in the regular world. Why you go to them for matters 
you need judgment. Aren't you God judges? Is there anybody any who understands the principles, the laws of God, the judgments of God? Don't you know that you are going to judge angels one day? You're going to judge. God is not putting on this planet earth just so we can flaunt and promote our talents, our voices, and our, what we know, our intellect. No. It's for his purpose. And he's going to give us more after this life. So that's why you have to be faithful this life. Be faithful and put much effort this life to bring glory to God so man can see the goodness of God. So man can know that there is a good God and God does love and God does provide and he does prosper. But if those who disobey and do not listen, he does punish and he does persecute. He does hurt you. He will do it. And yes, the blessings are amazing, but the punishments, the response of you going against his will, going against what he is saying, then life, everything around you, nature, people is going to come against you. You wonder why, like, oh, everything I try is always bad, nothing works for me. Well, one, probably just a bad person is when that's going to happen. Two, maybe God's trying to get your attention. People ignore that. God is probably trying to get your attention. And I'm like, you know what? Everything's always bad happens to me. I do it. I try my best. It messes up. Where do I need to go? You went to the psychiatrist. You went to a doctor. You went to the herbalist. You went to a, divin a person with divination. You went to school. You, you went online, traveled the world. You could not find the answers. You didn't have the money to the world, but you did, you did your research. You know, Google gives you access to scholar, um... Um, what's it called? Databases and researching people, scholars, like credible people. Now you don't have to pay. For, you, don't, you don't have to go to college to access those documents and information. Google's give it to you, so you educate it and research yourself about everything. Watch YouTube's and look at religions and watch um, TED Talk. And you just did everything. You watch Netflix and you watch Natu National Geographic. You are learned. You're, you're of the learned. You learned so much. It's in your hands because of your phone, because of television, because of the internet. It's here. I don't have to travel no more. I have to. I can just do my research, and I could look at testimonies or, or reviews of other people practicing this religion, practicing this way of life, practicing this culture. I can see right now. It's up to me to judge what fits best for me. And you did it all. You smoked it all. You drunk it all. You partied it all. You went to the strip club. You can you became a stripper. You did everything. I tried. I went to and fro up and around the earth and internet and video binge watching 40 days, 40 nights of research. It did not work. Everything is still bad for me. All right. Humble yourself before God and go to him. I don't want to. I grew up in church and I saw these things. And I heard, and I watched people do these things, and they were bad, and they're evil. I saw the Pope do this. I saw the pastor do this. I saw the deacon do this. I saw the first lady do this. I saw the nun do this. I saw the rabbi do this. I saw the priest do this. I saw the minister, the youth leader. I saw the camp. I saw my peers. I saw, I saw, yes, you saw the effects of sin to people, and you saw the result of people not being honest with God, sincere, 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 not being sincere with the Lord for real. Yes, you saw how man fall short. You seen it. Job saw. And her and he had to see Uriah get killed. I saw Uriah get killed. He took another man's wife. Man, this guy is weak. He's not killing his He's not killing our people. These people aren't good. But no, Job still remained faithful, right? But yeah, and the second son came. Adonijah wants to come. Wants to reign. Oh, David is dying. You know what? I don't know. I don't know about his son because that's the son that came from Uriah. And that's Bathsheba. You know, no, mm, I'm, I'm going to go to this guy here, Adonijah. He, he, he's good. People like him. He has influence. I might as well. David's going to die. And, you know, I went through it all. I went through a lot with David. And look at the decision he made. Cost him his life. If he stayed faithful to the end, because, oh, because what he saw, what he know, his intellect. And you can fall into that category and you fall into sin and die. You 
have your own death. You lead yourself to death, like away from God. Yeah, because I saw this happen in the church. I heard this. I did my research. I saw YouTube. I saw the people who left Christianity for their ancestral background and their culture. I saw the Christians who abused and the missionaries and how they rape the children and lie and you see the christian like yes people do that people do these things because sin is there but that's not an excuse to say you're not going to serve god almighty they're not going to commit to just christ oh what i read it's not fair what god did to the children of israel in the bible but you're reading from a perspective of pride you will go crazy if your food stamps are not here anymore. You will go crazy if your microwave starts working. You will go crazy if your Dash, um, DoorDash, Uber, your Grubhub, your Grubhub, Uber Eats, if they come late. You'll, 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 go, you'll be upset if you was missing ketchup, but you asked for the extra ketchup packets, even though you have ketchup in your house, but you want the ketchup and the rest. You, you go upset and put a review that you're you're not as satisfied and you're gonna leave a review on google so they all can see matter of fact i want money too i'm gonna go on youtube and record myself and rant how bad of a service this restaurant in my experience was yeah coming from that person perspective to read what god did to the children of israel that's not fair god these people are hungry give them the same food every day and they ask you for quail, you give it to them, you kill them while they're eating. That's not fair. Oh, no, it's fair. Yeah. And today, my pastor explained that part, explained that to me, because I didn't take that any offense. But I know people who took that part of offense, and he broke it down and made, under, made it understand that, yeah, because they thought they would die if they only ate manna. But God gave them what they wanted. The map, they wanted the, the quail and all that. He brought them over and they died eating that. So that shows you that God is in control of the pure life. God knows what can sustain. God knows what you need to survive. And that's why people are without excuse. Especially if you heard the word of God and you know you tasted and seen. You call yourself blessed, highly favored, but yet you are wicked you're not putting no effort you want the blessings to come to you you want the uh, jubilee to be for you you will do it all you will do what it takes to get it but not commit to jesus christ wholeheartedly sincerely you will not do you will not be sincere jesus is not a friend with benefits god knows what you need and he knows what you want. And based off based on the will of God for your life, God will give you what you need. Cause if you get more than what you don't you get more than what you have now, he knows it can mess you up. And it can mess you it can mess with your perspective of God. Oh, God gave me this, God gave me that. So you're gonna expect God to give, 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 give. Like what, what, what? Yeah, the truth is they they expect God to bless them and and give them what they needed, and they could serve their own gods, serve other gods of the people who were nearby. Yeah, I, I don't. I, as long as I have a Levi, I, I pay the Levites money. As long as I don't take my neighbor's wife and don't cheat, if I don't eat these certain foods, if I dress this way, I'm fine. I can go to my neighbor from another nation and follow and serve his God because it looks fun. It looks more fun. And it's less cost effective. I don't have to buy animals to go sacrifice. I don't have to do this. They, yeah. And people do what's good in their own eyes and they wonder why they were cursed and have problems and issues. No, but, and you, how's that look like today? I'll go to church Sunday all the time, you know? It's great. It's a great thing. But yeah, on um, Monday, I do, on Tuesdays, I have yoga. On Wednesdays, I have karate. On Thursdays, you know, I like to drink in a bar and have fun and watch movies. On Friday, because, you know, new movies always come out Friday. It's always weekend. So I have my day planned out. Me and my girlfriends and me and my guy friends, we play and we watch football and we play street basketball. And, you know, we I do golf time to time. Yeah, you have your life is planned out for pleasure. 
entertainment. You want to live this life. You know, you want to live it well, live it out. And then but on Sunday, oh no, that's my most holy day. That's for Jesus. I'm, I'm a saint again. Because I, I want to be marching in to the gates of heaven when Jesus come back. That's not going to be for you. If you're a liar, you're a thief every day, but just one day you're going to be holy. Well, to the Israel, they did it. They kept the Sabbath holy, but they worked and everything they wanted. Other so, like, yes, they did. But now we're under Jesus Christ. We have more access. We have more power. And you reading the word and understanding that. Stop making excuses of not of the effort you're putting in. How hard are you trying? Are you trying to just be a good person? So you have a religion of a part of your lifestyle. Because, you know, research says people who have religion in their life, they're less stressful. So, and you know, the best one they say is Christianity. So, you know, why not? I'm stressed out. I'm tired of smoking because all that money buying cigarettes, I can't save what I need to buy. Buying the weed and, you know, making me making me sluggish at work and not doing drug tests at work. So I can't really do the drugs anymore. So, you know, I, and, and I know I do these things for stress. So let me, let me try this thing out. Yeah, you become a lukewarm person. Yeah, but that's not me. I don't participate in those things. I don't drink. I don't party. I don't do. The, I don't do yoga. I don't do martial arts. I, that stuff is evil. It's evil. I don't. I don't want to practice those things. Okay, what do you do on your free time when you're not in church? When you're you're outside of your, your prayer time, outside of reading the Bible, outside of fellowship with those who are. In the faith, in body of Christ, what are you doing in your in your own time? Is the efforts in your own time striving to maintain your walk in the Lord, strengthening your walk in the Lord? I'm not saying, oh, you can't go to the park and do walks and and like have a hobby. So I'm saying, what are you doing between that time? Where are you going? What are you giving your eyes to? What are you giving your ears to? What conversations are you having? What are you doing? Because your whole life should be a praise unto the Lord. Because the Lord said to love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That takes every aspect of you. That's time. Excuse me. That's time. That's your resources. That's your life. Your relationships. Like everything. The, what you do, your whole being should be for the Lord unto God. But yes, that's why I box unto God, you know. I beat people out of aggression, pride. Because, you know, it was Christ who strengthens me, you know. You know, people, that's not what Jesus Christ is strengthening you to do. He's strengthening you to be a son, to be led by his Holy Spirit. Because he understands how weak and feeble your heart and mind is. And what your thoughts and your heart leads you to. He understands. That's why you have to be connected to him every day, every moment. But Paul had a job. Paul did this. Okay, yes, he did things to keep him going. But his main focus was for the Lord. What he ate, what he did. Because, you know, he said, by exercise profits little. So he gonna, he's going to work out sometime. You know, all that working, walking, preaching. You're like, hey, now watch what I eat, you know. The only thing I'm going to eat is any animal that's been strangled before it, before it died. Any food that's been sacrificed unto idols to a false god or something i'm not gonna eat that i'm not gonna eat that but everything else i'm gonna eat it i'm able to eat it because god blessed it the food's gonna be sanctified through prayer in the word of god so i i can eat what i can but i'm not going to be glutton i'm not going to do an excessive it's going to keep me from doing the work of god doing the will of god for my life so you have to search that out find that out what efforts the Lord wants you to try and to engage and what does he want you to do so you can live out the will of God for your life. And you need to repent. That's the number one thing. You have to repent. The repentance is the change and the renewal of the mind of how you perceive, how you see things and what you do it has to change. You must be born again, water baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit. In the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes, it's going to equip you and enable you to do the will of God for your life. 
with no doubt about it and commit to a church. I'm the church. I'm the false. You're a liar. You're a thief. You're stealing from God. You're stealing your spot in the body of Christ because God did not make the church. He didn't do it for no reason. God understands and knows man works better together. He loves unity. That's what he wants. He wants us to be united together. He not he calls us to unite the Muslims and the Catholics and the um, Orthodox and the Judah and Judaism and the Hindus and the Buddhists. No, he's not calling us to do that witchcraft. That's demonic. He's calling us to be converted, to be a Christian, to be a true son of God and to commit to a body so we can worship him in spirit and in truth. That's, what, that's, what, that's the God's desire for us to be reunited through him and that's through the blood of Jesus that makes us righteous because you can't get to the Father who is God without going to Jesus Christ first. So you have to accept Jesus Christ in your life and be a Christian every day. Not just on Sundays or days you participate with other Christians. It's an everyday thing at work, on the street, walking, in your mind, in your heart, by yourself, driving, traveling, um, surfing the internet, on your phone, everything. Yeah. God bless those who have the right conversation. I'm going to find that real quick. I read a song this morning. Good afternoon. Um, morning, afternoon. I'll read the Psalms. I don't remember between that time. Yeah, I was like, wow, that, that's a blessing. I didn't, I never caught that. How the Lord bless it. Okay, right here. Psalms 50, verse 23. Whoso offers praise glorifies me, and to him that order his Conversation all right, will I show the salvation of God? Amen. That's what it is. Those who conversation not just through what you say, it's your whole lifestyle. Your conversation in your heart and your mind with other people, your body language, what you're saying, how you're living in, out, what goes in, what goes in, what goes out. Yeah. Whoso whoso offers praise glorifies me. And to him that order his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. So our efforts is trying to be holy. Our efforts are trying to be like Jesus Christ. And our efforts is for us to be saved and others to be saved. Why? So God may be glorified and not ourselves.